Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is October 8th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, we're gonna talk about Australia and an ongoing pattern in which Australia, particularly South Australia, has been becoming drier and drier over recent years. Now the story of Australia's drying as with so many extreme weather events in the world today, has an association with patterns that are increasingly being driven by human-caused climate change. And to understand the present intensifying Australian, uh, Australian drought, it helps to understand how weather moves across the Southern Hemisphere, and in particular, how weather systems have traditionally impacted Australia. Now, Australia in general gets its rainfall from a number of systems. In the north near the equatorial zone, tropical convection and tropical, tropical based thunderstorms tend to provide most of the moisture. In the south, frontal systems swinging across the Southern Ocean and the Indian Ocean coming from the west and moving toward the east supply much of the moisture to the south. In the middle, there is a, a desert system and the desert in the middle of Australia has unfortunately be, uh, been apparently in, in tending to expand as Australia has gotten hotter and as it has gotten drier due to human-caused climate change influences. Now, overall, what's occurring to Australia is that the Southern Hemisphere polar jet stream in general is being driven more and more to the south, toward the South Pole by human-forced warming. In the Southern Hemisphere, we, we have seen some high amplitude jet stream wave variation, similar to that of the Northern Hemisphere, but it hasn't been quite as extensive or quite as pronounced, probably and I'm just due to the fact that the Northern Hemisphere's polar ocean tends to enhance energy transfer into the polar system and the polar weather system and the polar climate system, which tends to reduce the temperature more from between the pole and the lower latitudes and has an effect of generating these high amplitude jet stream waves that we've seen. The Southern Hemisphere's pole is a land mass based pole. And so the energy transfer from the ocean system to the pole is more muted. And so in general, what we've seen is more just of a, of a, of a general movement of the Southern Hemisphere polar jet stream toward the pole. And what this has done for Australia is move the weather patterns that bring moisture to southern Australia further to the south. I'm going to go ahead and switch to a, a cloud map so that you, we, we've been looking at the jet stream map. So just looking at a cloud map, you can see these frontal systems moving in through the southern ocean and approaching the coast of South Australia with, with a frontal system here and another one following behind. And as these systems have tended to drift more and more to the south, the southern section of Australia has received less rain. So moving on to the present day, that we, we are continuing to see this pattern persist for Australia with present conditions for Australia showing warmer than normal temperatures across the the landmass of Australia. And in general, the drought monitor, the global drought monitor showing large sections of Australia, in particular for the southern half of Australia, showing considerable moisture deficits. And these moisture def deficits have been generating headlines both across Australia and across the world with one headline from The Guardian saying, this drought is different, it's drier, and hotter and it's getting worse. So how much worse? 
Well, according to the Australia's Bureau of Meteorology, September of 2018 for Australia was the driest on record with rainfall deficiencies increasing. Sh showing that Australia's drought is continuing to deepen. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you a, a map of the rainfall deficiencies for Australia for the last six months, showing sections of southern Australia showing their lowest ever recorded rainfall percentiles, with large sections of Australia showing either serious rainfall deficiencies or severe deficiencies in rainfall. Now, overall, unfortunately, this pattern will likely continue to worsen at, you know, if, if the earth continues to warm with rainfall moving more further, further and further away from the southern coast and with temperatures rising, increasing evaporation from land masses and increasing drought potential for Australia. So yet one more reason to work as quickly as we can to reduce fossil fuel burning and to reduce carbon emissions and transition to a clean energy economy so that we can prevent these long-term and systemic losses to climates that have been very beneficial for Australia and for so many other regions of the world. Well, I check the time here. So we've got a few minutes. I also like to just point out that Guy Walton, who is a, a fellow climate blogger, wrote a, a similar excellent analysis on the issue of Australia's drought entitled Australia Gets an Ominous Spring. I'm going to go ahead and, and leave the link here for you and encourage you to read that as well. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.